Hello everybody, so we're back to Cousin More Bel Air this week with the ninth episode. We're inching closer and closer to the finale for season one, and things continue to heat up each and every week. I think the big thing that loomed large after last week's episode was the possibility of Will learning a bit more details about his father Lou, which does continue to loom over parts of this episode, although it's not the sole focus. Personally, this probably was one of my favorite episodes of the entire season, much because of the fact the drama really heats up as we head into the finale, but also the fact there's some pretty great guest stars, some cameo appearances from unexpected people, as some of these storylines go in some very unexpected directions that go along with these guest stars. Another interesting tidbit about the episode is that it's directed by Matthew A. Cherry, who did Hair Love a couple years back. It won the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. It's a pretty good short film. I recommend checking it out if you haven't already. But it's just great to see him get more work and, you know, especially something like Bel Air. I personally felt like he directed a really great episode. Before delving into all the big drama in the episode, we do start off on a bit lighter of a note because the entire family, the Bankses, Will, all them, they're going to church. They have fantastic outfit choices. They're all colorful. They have great accessories. The hats especially, I think those are awesome. All of them just look great individually. But at church is where we run into our first guest star of the episode. It's one of Hillary's old friends who also seems to be an influencer. And she's played by Karuchi Tran, which I think is a fun, interesting guest star. Certainly not an actress I talk about a lot, but I did enjoy her a lot in the bay and also she's in claws i actually do watch claws and that's kind of like a surprising thing probably to some people but she's pretty good she's not really featured in the episode all that long i imagine she's going to return because i can't imagine you introduce her in the second to last episode for this one random scene and then never see her again she doesn't seem all that enthused about hillary trying to collaborate in the future and that's kind of like the last we see of her at least for this episode the most surprising portion of this part of the episode for me at least was carlton carlton got up there and he sang but he was singing like he had a great great voice that was a big shock to me and probably some of the people in the church as well it's just unfortunate that he does have that anxiety thing it kicks in immediately and he starts stumbling up there on stage and just runs off the family's reaction to Carlton running off of the stage was the first of several times just within this episode where I realized the family's communication skills, they definitely need work. They're not all that great. Because somehow Hillary had absolutely no idea that Carlton's been doing drugs until Will brought it up to her. Then you see Vivian, you know, she's leaving that door wide open for Ashley to try and come out to her because she's noticed her increased interest in LGBTQ causes lately. And Ashley doesn't. That's like the more understandable one because, you know, you shouldn't come out if you're not ready to come out. And we've seen before had kind of some hesitancy towards that but even still I mean it was like the most obvious situation we shift back to Hillary actually because she has still not told Vivian and Phil that she owes Kylo $50,000 to get out of her contract so she's sneaking around with Jazz to try and take back all the stuff she left at the influencer house I'm with Jazz though because I even said it in last week's episode review I'm surprised that Uncle Phil just didn't fork over the $50,000 to do it but he doesn't know that it's going on but we do I guess assume Hillary has some kind of money. It's not something that's ever detailed in the show how much Hillary actually has of her own money, but we do know that she's staying in a five-star hotel because that's where her and Jazz are going to meet up later and that's where she's staying. Over the course of the season, we have seen Will and Carlton's relationship to be, I guess, tumultuous to say the least. You know, one week they're kind of becoming friends again, the next they're enemies, and then cycles go on and on and on. But I do have liked the developments the last couple episodes between the two of them. Just within the past couple episodes, you've seen the development there, the evolution, where it seems like their friendship is actually leading to be something more than kind of casual friends acquaintances. We've seen very clearly throughout the course of the season that Carlton is dealing with a lot of different things. Of course, he has the anxiety which has been on display since the very beginning then on top of that he's trying to be this model kid for uncle phil and aunt vivian and his coping mechanism for that is resorting to drugs but i'm glad that will has been trying his best each and every episode to be there for him in his time of need no matter how mean carlton know. may be throughout the she season to will will always offers a helping hand Look and just me. gives him the opportunity to kind of vent know. to him if he no, ever needs me. to and she knows that he's so by his side and is going to support him no matter what he does really but it agree. seems like with this episode with those talks we had some sort of breakthrough and we see him and Carlton talk later on in the episode and he tells Will that he flushed his drugs because of his encouragement. Now I wish it was that easy to just get off of drugs in real life because it's just not that easy. You know it is a scripted TV show after all. So I hope that that is the end of Carlton's drug abuse because I mean it's not like particularly one of my favorite things about the show but I'm glad that that's over with and Will's going to try and be there for him and we're developing this friendship this kind of brotherly bond between the two of them. 
Now we gotta talk about one of the best parts of the episode for me personally, and I think for longtime fans of the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, when Vivian goes to convince the Art Council Board of Trustees to give her their fellowship, and the members of the Art Council Board are played by Daphne Maxwell Reed and Vernie Watson Johnson, Aunt Viv number two, replacement Aunt Viv, and Vi from the original series. They don't get a ton of scenes to work with, this is kind of their one shining moment in the episode as they talk to Vivian, but it's just great to see them back since they do grill Vivian on why she came back to painting after all these years. Years. And I really liked the way that she described everything, why she came back, and all the hardships she felt to why she left in the first place. You know, she got inspiration to return again after Will came around because, you know, he's such a unique free spirit and that kind of gave Vivian the inspiration to paint once again. It was really powerful stuff here. Obviously, Vivian does get the fellowship, but just getting that fellowship does come with its own potential difficulties because she's going to have to do a lot of traveling. Lots of travel, press engagements, all that stuff, which is kind of difficult to do when you're raising all of these kids and your husband's trying to run for district attorney. There's not really a lot of time to go around to take care of kids when one of them's traveling and one of them's trying to be district attorney. And that's a whole other ball game, a drama there. Speaking of the political stuff, much of the shock of pretty much nobody, getting into politics can be a bit messy as we do see both sides trying to dig up dirt on one another before their upcoming debate. We, it's, it's the dirt we've seen already. Lisa's dad, he cheated on his wife while she was dying of lupus. And, you know, the other thing is the whole stuff with Will. Will got arrested, Phil covered it up. Each of them is going to try and use that in the upcoming debate more than likely. It's all of the stuff we've seen cause friction among both sides of the families, but the big person who gets a lot of flack in this episode that causes a lot of friction is actually Jeffrey. Since Jeffrey does find out all of the dirt that Will wanted to know about his dad, Lou, but Will actually kind of has a change of heart. He doesn't want to know anything about his dad, and he gives the file to Phil, which that just blows open another can of worms, because we do know he went behind Phil back to do all of this stuff and give him that info and then it snowballs into even more stuff when Jeffrey confronts Ville about his practices in the political space which I kind of see the argument from both sides about because both of them make decent enough points. I'd still say I lean more on Jeffrey's side in this argument than Phil however. I do kind of agree with what Jeffrey says to Phil because it does feel like Phil has the tendency to place his aspirations over everyone else's in the family because a lot of theirs get crushed in the process beneath his and you know it's kind of true if you've seen every Everything in the show up to this point. Pretty much everything in the family has been micromanaged to make his campaign better. Phil doesn't seem at this point in time to understand that or grasp that. So between that and feeling betrayed by Jeffrey for him going and telling Will about his dad anyways, he does fire him. I feel like that's going to be a decision that's going to be reversed. Even though we do kind of try and explain away why Jeffrey's going to be absent. You know, he has a family emergency. But the way the episode ends, I feel like we're going to see Jeffrey pop up sooner rather than later. All episode long, I've been on the edge of my seat because because this episode is so tense between all the different drama going on. It's been a pretty good episode. I do think the writing is very strong in this episode. All the actors are giving it their all. But much to my point, like I said earlier on, where there's just so much lack of communication, we do see Lisa confront Will because now she knows the truth about why Will is here in the arrest and Uncle Phil covered it up. I'm surprised that wasn't brought up sooner. I figured because they were being so truthful to one another that was going to come up in some shape or form. But I guess it didn't because we had that conflict here between between Lisa and Will, and I guess they're kind of not together anymore. It's not like made specifically clear what their future is right now. But the moment we've all been waiting for, the big epic debate between Lisa's dad and Uncle Phil, it's a bit underwhelming. I mean, it's not the debate that I wanted personally, but I understand why it had to be this way in the context of the story. Before going out there, Will and Carlton warn Phil about Lisa's dad going to bring up the arrest and cover up. But during Uncle Phil's opening statement, he withdraws from the race and endorses Lisa's dad and it seems like to me at least Jeffrey's words really spoke to him he finally understood he decided to choose his family over going through all of this drama in the political space and he even tells Vivian to take the fellowship so it was a very sweet way to end off the episode and having this big family bonding moment I don't know what the future holds for some of the other stuff you know the stuff with Lou that's kind of on the horizon still I feel like that's going to be the big thing the big crux the big thing to end off the season on because it's still not resolved we don't really know anything about Will's dad yet really. I also wonder who's going to play Will's dad. I figure it has to be someone noteworthy, right? But yeah, all around a very solid, a very entertaining episode of Bel Air. We're inching close to that finale like I said earlier, and I'm pretty excited for the finale, even if it will be kind of bittersweet because we are ending off the season. I'll be extremely excited to hear what you guys end up thinking about this episode of Bel Air, episode 9, when it airs on Peacock in a couple days. I do put out the episode reviews a couple days early, but they are given to the press early for review purposes, and I'm you know, one of those people that gets to see 
see it. Everybody asks me every single week, at least one person in the comment section, how I watch them early. I explain every week. Nobody listens. You know, it is what it is at this point. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out the reviews. I really appreciate that. Make sure to like on the video. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Subscribe to updated movie reactions, unboxings, and more. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.